Hey guys, let's have a look at this together. Scatter graphs and correlation. Now, here we've got two different scatter graphs and they both show a positive correlation. When we talk about correlation, that's a relationship between two different values. So for each of these points along the scatter graph, there is an X value and a Y value. Like when you plot points, you look for an X, Y coordinate. So this point here reflects some X value and some Y value. And together that may represent one specific item. It might be somebody's age and their height, or it could be somebody's calorie intake and their weight. It could be any collection of two different types of values and is showing a relationship between them. Now this one is a strong positive correlation because all of these points seem to be close to that line. And this is a weak positive correlation because there's more distance between the points in the line. But I wouldn't worry so much about strong and weak. Generally on an exam, they're just happy if you say positive or negative. Now these are positive correlations because as you can see when we graph the line, it's going upwards. Now don't say that it's going downwards when you go backwards. Don't get yourself caught in that thinking. When you go to read a question or you read a, a word or a sentence or you look at the numbers along the number line, they go in this direction, right? So as we go across in this direction, this line is going upwards. Don't go backwards and down. Forwards, it's going upwards, okay? and a, Negative correlation would be if it went forward and it went downwards, right? So that's one thing, positive and negative correlation. These are positive correlations and they show that when the X value is increasing, so for a high X value, the Y value is also high. Or a lot of you were arguing, well, what about low values? Yes, it shows that if you have a low X value, the Y value is also low. So it shows that both of the two values that we're talking about, the relationship between them, they are the same kind of relationship. So for the high ones, they have a high. So this might be somebody with a high calorie intake and they have a high body weight, for example, and somebody who has a low average um, calorie intake has a low body weight, for example, or somebody's age and how tall they are. Somebody who's tall or who is old is also quite tall. Somebody who is young, so low on the age scale, is also quite short, so low on the height scale. Okay, those would both be positive correlations because the values are essentially the same. High means high, low means low. Okay, when we look at negative correlations, so turning the page here. First of all, this is no correlation because we don't see any kind of pattern there at all. We could try and draw a line on there, but it wouldn't show an upwards slope nor a downward slope. It would just be really random there. So there's no sense in drawing a line for no correlation. Only draw a line when you see a clear pattern. And this is a downwards pattern. You can see that line of best fit gets as close as possible to all of those points and has about the same number of points above as below. And this is a weaker negative correlation. Again, it's a downward slope, about the same number of points above as below, but there's more distance between the line and the points. Now this negative correlation shows that when one value is bigger, the other value is smaller. For example, the amount of time that you spent playing video games compared to the amount of time that you studied last night, well, if you spent a lot of time playing video games, you probably didn't study very much last night. So this value is big, but that value, so the Y value is small. Whereas somebody who didn't play very much video games, so very little video games, this point's way up here. They spent all that time studying. So you see a negative correlation because you see that negative slope as we go across in the positive direction. So as we go across, as the numbers on the x-axis get bigger, the numbers on the y values get smaller. One value might be getting bigger, the other value is getting smaller. Or one value might be getting smaller and the other value is getting bigger. They're the opposites to each other. Okay, so that's what makes it a negative correlation. Okay, now... Here there's an example and that shows you what I'm talking about with the two different values. This example is about the engine size of a car and the fuel economy. The bigger the engine size, so we're talking about like these muscle cars that make a lot of noise, but they maybe get a waste, waste a lot of fuel. They go really fast, but they waste a lot of fuel doing it. So they don't go as far with the same amount of fuel. So here they, they showed this and they showed that there is a negative correlation for this by plotting these points. These are the first numbers are the X values. Just like this is a table of values, there are X here and Y there. The point 3.2 goes with 10.2, and I can look over here for that example on the graph. 3.2, that must be this one here, three, and a bit more than three, 3.2, and that is 10.2, okay? So that point there represents this particular car here, 
which has an engine side of 3.2 liters, and the fuel economy of it is 10.2 kilometers per liter. Okay, so each pair of these is a point on the graph. So they plotted the scatter graph, plotting each of these sets of points and commented on any relationship they saw. They saw that it made this sort of pattern. And from that pattern, they could see that they could sort of draw a line going downwards. You could draw a line upwards, but it does not fit most of those points. To keep the line as close as possible to all of those points, it would be a downward sloping line. It doesn't need to go through zero. It shouldn't go through zero because that would be way off from these points. It needs to be as close to the points as it possibly can, keeping the distance between them as minimal as possible. And that's about the same number of points above as below. So there's their line of best fits. It shows that the points tend to lie on a diagonal line in the direction from top left to bottom right. So that's downwards. This is a negative correlation between the engine size and the fuel economy. And you should be able to sort of reason out whether it will be a positive correlation or a negative. If one value gets bigger, will the also, also, other also get bigger, or will the other get smaller? And in this case, they are the reverse direction. As the engine size is, size is bigger, the fuel economy is less. And as the engine size is smaller, the fuel economy is more. Okay? Right, so you guys started on this exercise yesterday. And we had a look at just, is it positive or is it negative? Score on one math exam and score on another math exam. Now, let's go back and have a look at that on a scatter graph so you can understand what I'm talking about here. So, coming back here. If someone were to score badly on their first math exam, so this is my first math exam along the x-axis, if they score badly, I wouldn't expect them to score really well on the second math exam, right? Somebody who scores badly on the first math exam, we can sort of assume that they struggle with math and on the second math exam, so that's gonna be plotted up this side, they're also gonna score quite low as well. So this first point here shows somebody who maybe scored about 20% on the first math exam, for example, and maybe 25 on the second math exam, and we plotted that point 20, 25 there. This next one did a little bit better on the first math exam, but worse on the second math exam. They still did quite low for both of them. And you can see that as the person does better, as we work our way up along the first score, so up along the x-axis, they are going up along the y-axis. This person who did very well on the first math exam also did quite well on the second math exam. So you can choose a low point and you can say, is the low first math exam going to be a low second math exam? That's going to be a point down here. What if they did well on the first math exam? Would they do really well on the second math exam? That would be a point up there. And just by thinking about those two possibilities, you see that positive correlation. Okay, let's have a look at the next example, see if we can show you that on a graph as well. So shoe size and the time it takes to walk to school. Now these may not sound like they make very much sense. I mean, what difference does it take how big your shoe is? Maybe you live close to school, maybe you live further away. But I think maybe they, what they might have been getting at here is somebody with a big shoe size might have big long legs. And if they have long legs, they take less time to walk to school. But I think that we could consider that a weak correlation, right? Because we don't know how far they're going. So we could say that it's a weak correlation, but would that be a weak positive or a weak negative? The bigger the shoe size, does it take more time to get to school or less time to get to school? Let's have a look back again at one of these. So I would think that if somebody has a big shoe size, so big value here for the X, they would take a small amount of time to get to school. So not a point up here, a point down there. If they have a small shoe size, they would take a big amount of time to get to school. So I've got one point up here, one point down there. That doesn't look like it's gonna be a positive correlation. That looks like it's gonna be more of a negative correlation and probably, like we said, probably a weak negative correlation. There might be people with big shoe sizes, but they live far away from school. Like this guy is not the person who took the longest to get to school or the shortest to get to school. So he probably lives further from school than this guy. You might have somebody who's way up here who has to take like three buses to get to school. It doesn't matter how big his shoes are, right? So a weak negative correlation, or you could say no correlation at all because shoe size has nothing to do with how far they go to school, right? Or how long it takes, okay? Let's have another look at another one. Last one, outdoor temperature and number of ice cream sold per shop, by a shop. So if the temperature outside is high, do they sell more ice creams or less ice creams? Let's look here and think about it here. If the 
temperature outside is high. Do they tell a lot of ice creams or a little ice creams? I would think they sell a lot of ice creams at a high temperature, right? If the temperature is low, so it's cold outside, would they sell a lot of ice creams or a little ice creams? I would think for cold temperatures, there are some weirdos like ice cream in winter, but I would think for cold temperatures, people tend to buy less ice creams. So I've got one point that I'm thinking is the most common case down here, low temperature, few ice creams are sold. And another point way up here, for a high temperature, a lot of ice creams are sold. I would say it's a line that goes like this. Is that positive or negative? Is it going upwards or going downwards? That's a positive correlation. And I would think it's fairly strong, but like I said, they don't mind if you say strong or weak, as long as you say that it's positive or negative. And I think that would be, definitely be positive. So ice creams sold and the temperature outside, the higher the temperature, the more ice creams are sold. Okay, see if you can get on with that on your own now.